Chapter 16 Chemistry in Everyday Life Part 1 Learning Objectives After studying this topic, you will be able to visualize the importance of chemistry in daily life, explain the term chemotherapy, describe the basis of classification of drugs, explain drug target interaction of enzymes and receptors. Dear children, by now you have learnt the basic principles of chemistry and also realized that it is very important in every sphere of human life. The principles of chemistry have been used for the benefit of mankind. If you think about cleanliness, what comes to your mind? You will think about materials like soaps, detergents, household bleaches, toothpastes, etc. If you see the beautiful clothes, you think about chemicals of the synthetic fibers used for making clothes and chemicals giving colors to them. If you think about food materials, carbohydrates, proteins and fats and vitamins will appear in your mind about which you have learned in the previous topic. If we fall sick, we think about medicines which are chemicals, explosives, fuels, rocket propellants, building and electronic materials, etc. are all chemicals. Chemistry has influenced our life so much that at every moment we come across chemicals. We ourselves are beautiful chemical creations of all our activities are controlled by chemicals. Today we shall learn the application of chemistry in three important and interesting areas, namely medicines, food materials and cleansing agents. First of all, we will discuss about drugs and their classification. Drugs are chemicals of low molecular masses approximately 100 to 500 units. These interact with macromolecular targets and produce a biological response. In other words, we can say drug plus molecular target is equal to biological response. Are all the drugs useful? No. Those drugs whose biological response is therapeutic and useful are called medicines and these are used in diagnosis, prevention and treatment of diseases. Children, what do you think? Are all the drugs always useful? If drugs or medicines are taken in doses higher than those recommended by the doctor, they may act as potential poisons. The use of chemicals for therapeutic effect is called chemotherapy. Now we will discuss the classification of drugs. Drugs can be classified into mainly four groups. First is on the basis of pharmacological effect. Drugs which are used for a particular type of problem, for example analgesics used for pain relieving are kept in this category. Antiseptics are used to kill the growth of microorganisms. Second is on the basis of drug action. In this category we have those drugs whose action is same on a particular biological process. For example, all antihistamines inhibit the action of compound histamine which causes inflammation in the body. Third is on the basis of chemical action. It is based on the chemical structure of the drug. Drugs classified in this way share common structural features and often have similar pharmacological activity. For example, sulfonamides have common structural feature as shown. And fourth is on the basis of molecular targets. Drugs usually interact with biomolecules such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. These are called target molecules or drug targets. Drugs which have some common structural features may have the same mechanism of action on targets. This classification based on molecular targets is the most useful classification for medicinal chemists. Dear children, 
Now we will discuss drug target interaction. In living beings, macromolecules perform various functions in the body. For examples, proteins are of many kinds. Do you remember what performs the role of biological catalyst in the body? These are proteins which are called enzymes. Some proteins which are crucial to communication system in the body are called receptors. Carrier proteins carry polar molecules across the cell membrane. Children, you know that nucleic acids have coded genetic information for the cell. You also know that lipids and carbohydrates are structural parts of the cell membrane. So children, we will study the drug target interaction with the examples of enzymes and receptors. Now we will study about enzymes as drug targets. First, we will discuss the catalytic action of enzymes. So children, to understand the interaction between a drug and an enzyme, we should know how enzyme catalyze the reaction. In their catalytic activity, enzymes perform two major functions. The first function of an enzyme is to hold the substrate for a chemical reaction. Active sites of enzymes hold the substrate molecule in a suitable position so that it can be attacked by the reagent effectively. Substrates bind to the active site of the enzyme through a variety of interactions such as ionic bonding, hydrogen bonding, van der Waals interaction or dipole-dipole interaction. As you can see in the picture A, the active site and substrate in figure B and in figure C, you can see that substrate is binding with the enzyme. The second function of an enzyme is to provide functional groups that will attack the substrate and carry out chemical reaction. Now, we will discuss drug-enzyme interaction. Drugs inhibit any of the activities of enzymes, which we have just discussed, that is to hold the substrate and to provide the functional group. These can block the binding site of the enzyme and prevent the binding of substrate or can inhibit catalytic activity of the enzyme. Such drugs are called enzyme inhibitors. Drugs can inhibit the attachment of substrate on active site of enzymes in two different ways. Some drugs compete with the natural substrate for their attachment on the active sites of enzymes. Such drugs are called competitive inhibitors. As you can see in the picture that the drug and substrate have the similar structure and in place of substrate the drug is binding with the enzyme and so active site of enzyme gets blocked. So there is competition between the drug and the substrate and that is why such drugs are called competitive inhibitors. There is one more way. Some drugs do not bind to the enzyme's active site. These bind to a different site of enzyme which is called allosteric site. This binding of inhibitor at allosteric site as shown in the picture changes the shape of the active site in such a way that substrate cannot recognize it. As you can see in the picture that the drug gets attached to the enzyme at a different place and not at the active site. So the shape of the active site changes and the substrate does not fit into the active site and in this way the working of the enzyme will be inhibited. If the bond formed between an enzyme and an inhibitor is a strong covalent bond and cannot be broken easily, then the enzyme is blocked permanently. The body then degrades the enzyme inhibitor complex and synthesizes the new enzyme. Now we will discuss about receptors as drug targets. Receptors are proteins that are crucial to body's communication process. Majority of these are embedded in cell membranes as you can see in the picture. 
receptor proteins are embedded in the cell membrane in such a way that their small part possessing active site projects out of the surface of the membrane and opens on the outside region of the cell membrane as it is clear from the picture. In the body, message between two neurons and that between neurons to muscles is communicated through certain chemicals. These chemicals known as chemical messengers are received at the binding sites of receptor proteins. To accommodate a messenger, shape of the receptor site changes. This brings about the transfer of message into the cell. Thus, chemical messenger gives message to the cell without entering the cell as shown in this picture. You can see in figure A that the receptor is receiving the chemical messenger. In figure B, you can see that the shape of the receptor gets changed after it receives the message. And in figure C, you can see that the receptor regains its structure after the messenger is removed. Dear children, there are a large number of different receptors in the body that interact with different chemical messengers. These receptors show selectivity for one chemical messenger over the other because their binding sites have different shape, structure and amino acid composition. There are two types of drugs. Drugs that bind to the receptor site and inhibit its natural function are called antagonists. These are useful when blocking of message is required. There are other types of drugs that mimic the natural messenger by switching on the receptor. These are called agonists. These are useful when there is a lack of natural chemical messenger. Dear children, now we will discuss a question. You can see it on the screen. Which of the following statements is not true about enzyme inhibitors? First option is inhibit the catalytic activity of the enzyme. Second is prevent the binding of substrate. Third is generally a strong covalent bond is formed between an inhibitor and an enzyme. Inhibitors can be competitive or non-competitive. Right. The third option is the correct answer. That is, generally a strong covalent bond is formed between an inhibitor and an enzyme. As we have already discussed that if the bond formed between an enzyme and an inhibitor is a strong covalent bond and cannot be broken easily, then the enzyme is blocked permanently. So, generally a weak bond like hydrogen bond Van der Waals interaction, etc., is formed between the enzyme and the inhibitor. Dear children, today we have learned the importance of chemistry in daily life and meaning of the term chemotherapy, and also learned the basis of classification of drugs and also the drug target interaction of enzymes and receptors. And now it's time for the homework. So, note down your homework. Question 1 is explain the role of allosteric site in enzyme inhibition. Question 2, how are receptor proteins located in the cell membrane? Dear children, I am sure you have understood the topics very well. In the next session, we will discuss the therapeutic action of a few classes of drugs artificial sweetening agents and cleansing agents. Thank you.